Welcome back to Global Evolution with J.D. Messenger, the show that explores global events and trends and generates power to move minds. Now, here's your host, J.D. Messenger. Welcome back to Global Evolution. We're talking about physics, and our guest is Professor Frank Wilczek, the uh, Herman Feshbach Professor of Physics at MIT and the Nobel Prize Laureate for 2004. We have talked about evolution from the context of genetics with Dr. Francis Collins, and we have talked about it from the point of view of personal development with Dan Millman. And I was thinking a couple of weeks ago, and that's always a dangerous thing, so I Googled what is force. And when I Googled it, Uh, I came up to an interesting article. The gentleman who wrote it is our distinguished guest today. Frank, I want to understand, inquiring minds want to know, what is our basic understanding of some things like energy, mass, and force? And, And where I'm coming from is that, you know, from when I went to school... Well, we won't say how long ago that was. <laughs> no, 30 years ago, the things that I was taught were maybe written in books 50, 60 years ago. And it seems that we have a, a, a completely new understanding of things like force and mass and gravity or energy. Am I, am I correct here? Yes, absolutely. Okay, I have a question. Einstein, everybody remembers Einstein's equation is E equals MC squared, but that's not exactly the way he wrote it. Is right. that correct? He wrote M equals E divided by C squared, which so, I, I call Einstein's second law. So, and that's uh, because it's less familiar than the other one, but yeah. it's more profound than it's the way he actually So he's uh, saying mass so. is energy divided by the speed of light squared, for those that don't know what that right. means. Yeah, so, Einstein, from the very beginning, was trying to understand how mass could arise not as a an irreducible concept that you couldn't make any simpler but as a particular form of energy where does dark energy and dark matter fit into this equation if at all by sort of a process of elimination they don't they're called dark but it's they're not really dark they don't absorb light it's not like green lightsabers and Blue lightsaber no. dark. Yeah, <laughs> they certainly don't Red, glow. Right. <laughs> uh, they, they're not dark in the sense of uh, black obelisks. Right. Like we we suspect that it's there, and we know that something's there because the gravitational field around matter uh, is being affected by something we can't see. Yeah, there's not enough gravity due to matter to explain the motion of matter. So there has to be something else if, that's affecting the motion of matter, but that's not matter. Okay, so th- does that mean the gravitational forces are greater than yes. what we... Okay, so the gravitational forces are greater with an object than they should be based on the mass of the object. That's right. Okay. So, oh, hey, I think I passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is mass? If mass is energy, what, what, is, what is the origin of mass? Mass is a particular form of energy. Now we understand that protons and neutrons are themselves made out of more basic things, uh, the quarks and gluons. Frank, uh, it's been an absolute honor. I I hope I didn't butcher some of these amazing things. Is there anything you'd like to share sort of in, in summary? Well, I think people should know and appreciate that what you see with your untutored senses in the physical world is much less than what there is that what you see as empty space is, in our modern understanding, actually full of activity. It's a wonderful world. The part we understand is strange and rich, and the more you learn about it, the more wonderful it seems. But it's also become clear that what we know so far is just scratching the surface of what there is to be known. 